All right, welcome back, guys. My name is Mark Allred, and today I'm going to be talking to you again about the Boss RC300 and how to do some awesome looping. If you're enjoying the videos, please like, comment, share, all those kinds of fun things, because it really helps me out to keep making these videos for everybody. All right, today we're doing Dance Monkey from Tones and I. And before we dig into that, let's talk about the gear I'm using. So for all my effects, I'm using the Line 6 Helix. doesn't matter whether or not you use that, just... It, it explains kind of what I'm doing. And then, of course, I'm using the Boss RC300 for the loop station. So as we dig into Dance Monkey, let's talk about the key. Let's talk about how I'm separating up the channels. So first off, let's talk about how I do the channels first. Sorry, the, the tracks. So for tracks one through three, how I usually like to break them up. Track one, it's always for my rhythm guitar. Track two, that's for my bass line. Track three, that's where I put my beatboxing, kind of like my rhythm section, okay? So... The chords that I'm doing, the key for me, A minor. So I'm doing A minor, F, G, E minor, like this. All right, so that's where we're going. So for track one, for the rhythm, we're going to be doing a delay pedal. So you want to get something that you can either control the tap tempo or however you want to set that up, but the tempo is super important. If you get the tempo wrong, you're going to mess up the rest of the song. Also, the timing for track one is so important. So what I like to do if I'm setting up track one with a, a delay pedal kind of thing, I like to subdivide in my head. So I'm going one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay. So let's try that. Track one. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Boom, and ending it is key. If you do it a little bit too early or a little bit too late, you're gonna mess everything up. Okay, so now let's talk about track two. I'm gonna hide my pick in my sleeve for a second. So let's talk about track two. I'm using an octave pedal to turn my uh, guitar into a bass. So all I'm doing is um, octave notes because if you notice on this song, the bass is all that's really kind of playing on the chorus and it really is a fun groove. I'm not playing it exactly the way it is on the record. I just like it. So I'm taking each chord and doing just octaves. And I'm doing this rhythm. Let's give it a try. Track two is going to be the bass. All right, here we go. Let's activate track two. Get ready. Boom, got it. And what I like to do for most of my bass stuff, in my kind of like my tone, I just like to add a, a double, um, sorry, I'm gonna put my pick back. My, I like to double it up. So I take my regular guitar signal, put it on my bridge, and then I'm gonna mute the strings a little bit. And just do the exact same thing on top of it, just because I like that tone. So that's what I did. So let's do that. You ready? And I'm going to start on the E. And that helps kind of the bass kind of cut through a little bit. Especially if you're doing this live, your bass might not have a great sound. And so it, I've always just enjoyed the tone altogether on that. All right, last thing that I add, let's get that pick out of my sleeve. The last thing that I like to add, throw my uh, back up to the neck, is I just like to do a rhythm, chunk, kind of a, a vibe on that. That's what I like to add to, to track two. Yeah. There it is, that's what I was doing. Not too fast, because it's more of a groove. Track two, here we go. Uh, that feels good. All right. So we've got track one and two done. All we need now is track three. Track three, 
I split up my beatboxing into two parts. So I do hi-hat snare, and then I do snare and kick. So for my hi-hat snare, I'm doing a And then for my snare and kick, I'm doing All right. Let's get to the top of the track and we can add in our beatboxing. Here we go. So this is just track three by itself. One, two. You got it. Now again, on this one, since we did the beatboxing last, we're having bleed over. You can hear the bass line and the guitar track going on because we had those things playing while the microphone was activated. So if you listen, you can hear the bass track a little bit. Now, this doesn't matter on the way that I do this song because I'm only going to bring in track three when I have everything playing at the same time. If I were other songs, you want to do the drums first because you might use just that rhythm piece at a different time in the song by itself. But on this one, it doesn't matter, so we're all good. All right, so those are all the pieces. That's all you need to do this song. And again, we're in the key of A minor. So let's talk about how I actually perform this song. Um, most songs, you want to have some kind of gradual progression of excitement. So during the first half of every verse, I'm just playing just the chords by themselves and I'm doing them down over here so I'm doing a, a, a D shape F a D shape G so here's the chords so it's like they say now I look love the way you shine see the way you shine so take your hand my dear and place them both in mine you know you stopped me dead while I was passing by and now I beg to see you dance just one more time. Oh, I see you, see you, see you. So what I was doing during, um, for the second half, I like to use them both. So we're jumping in with track one and playing the guitar. Oh, I see you, see you, see you every time. And oh my, I like, I like your style. Okay, so that's for the second half. The first half is just the guitar by itself. Second half, we're doing both like that. All right, and then once we get to the end of that, right before the chorus, now I beg to see you dance just one more time. And then you cut out and you sing the top of the line by yourself before you kick in just the bass track by itself. And you get that groove. And they say, dance for me, dance for me, dance for me, oh, oh, oh. I've never seen anybody do the things you do before. So that's the chorus. You're just doing track two by itself. All by itself, because it's got that groove. That's a fun groove right there. So that's verse chorus. That's how I did it on both. So first verse, second verse, same way. I did those halves and then add in the. All right. And then the chorus is just the bass line. All right. And so now let's talk about the bridge and the end. So on the bridge, she does. Oh, oh. for that one, I'm doing like I do the, the second half of each verse. So I'm just using track one and playing the guitar. Whoa, 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 whoa. Right? And then before you drop it into the very end, the last chorus, you want to have that lift. Up to this point, we haven't even used track three because we wanted the end, the last time we played through the chorus, to have somewhere to go. So you want to have some big feel right there, something for people to dance to. So at the end of, the, at the end of that third of the bridge, nah. Ah, ah, you know, her voice gets all nuts and intense, and that's a fun place to be. Nah, ah, they say, dance for me, dance for me, dance for me, whoa, oh, oh. You bring everything in. Go through the chorus twice, do whatever you want, however you want to sing that to bring it up to a whole nother level. And that'll get people dancing. That's a lot of fun right there. And the way I end it is I gradually take off the tracks from track three to track one, right? So let's pretend like we're doing the, the last half of the last verse, right? So it'll go something like this. They say, move for me, move for me, move for me, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
And when you're done, then make you do it all again. All again. And then you make sure to kill that last track before it plays the second chord, the F. Right? And that's it. So, I hope that you love that. I hope you had a lot of fun. Again, like, comment, share. That helps me out a ton. And until next time, keep looping. <laughs>